Well, hi, everyone. Looks like we have another California story in the news. This time it's a pedestrian bridge in Sacramento that is supposed to connect a, a bike trail across I-5 interstate. The rest of the trail was opened up in May of 2024, and a lot of people were eagerly anticipating the full opening of this project. It's reported to have cost $23 million and has been in the works for over 10 years. And local media outlets have reported that the city has directed the contractor, Mountain Methods, to remove the bridge and replace it at the contractor's cost because the city alleges that inappropriate or non-conforming material was used to construct the bridge relative to the concrete, and there was some mention of reinforcing steel. So I'm going to go through what the implications are here and indicate how in my past experience, similar investigations have gone. To me, it's rather odd that they would go from, we're gonna open up this bridge soon to, oh no, we're gonna to have to tear it down and replace it. Seems like there was some things going on behind the scenes that the public wasn't privy to. So we can see here's the location of the pedestrian bridge and the overall route of the trail is about five miles and it connects to another trail along the Sacramento River. So we can see the project information page. And they say, you know, the project's been mostly completed and the entire trail south of Riverside Boulevard is open for public use. Unfortunately, the bridge over Riverside Boulevard and I-5 connecting the trail to the Sacramento River bike trail is currently still under construction with the goal of opening this summer. So here's a description, nearly five mile long trail. They spent a lot of money on artwork and the estimated project total was $23 million. Now, I always get a kick out of some of the reporting. This is from CBS Sacramento. The, the headline is, brand new bridge along Sacramento Trail is already broken. It was never used. Well, there's no evidence that this bridge is actually in distress. So I'm not sure where they got that, but to one up them, a lawyer is talking about this story and says Sacramento Trail Bridge collapses before opening. And they're referring to this Del Rio Bridge. And obviously it hasn't collapsed either. So here's a picture of this new pedestrian bridge. You can see the orange construction barrel. Off to the left in the frame is a set of abandoned railroad tracks over a separate bridge. And for whatever reason, the city didn't repurpose this railroad bridge. That would have been much cheaper. I don't know the ins and outs. I just have noticed a trend that people would like to replace something altogether, then upgrade or repair or rehabilitate. And I think it's just because they have funding to do the big project. And I, I don't understand it. You know, people are supposed to be about the environment and sustainability. And we see this kind of stuff all the time. And now for their efforts, they get to replace the bridge. Uh, if it's ever going to be opened back to the public. So some additional shots of this bridge. So as I understand it, the city's alleging that material used for the reinforced concrete didn't meet project specifications. And why this came to light after the bridge ostensibly has been completed, just not been opened to, to the public, is, is really odd. And I don't think the city is likely to fully escape any responsibility in this situation. So on bridge projects, or just construction projects in general, you have a set of plans, uh, project specifications. The contractor's required to make submittals saying, this is my mix design, bunch of details. This is the reinforcing steel I'm using. Typically, almost uh, universally, you would have owner's representatives, either city staff or a consultant that they had engaged to provide on-site construction observation services. So that's an opportunity to say, hey, you submitted for this kind of concrete and now we're seeing something else. Another thing is part of that on-site observation, typically they're sampling and testing, uh, particularly of the concrete. So you would have perhaps three day, 28 day break, and even longer unconfined compressive strength testing to find out if there's a problem with the concrete. And that's what this test looks like. And by the way, if you ever run this test, you should close the, the front gate there so that you don't get hit with a large chunk of concrete flying off. I'm just gonna run this video here real quick. Yeah. 
So that's what's called an unconfined compression test. You have a hydraulic ram with a load cell, so you know how much load's applied. You know the cross-sectional area of the concrete. And when it breaks, you know you can take the load divided by the cross-sectional area and come up with the compressive strength uh, at the point of failure. Typically for bridge projects, that concrete specified to be a minimum of either 3,000 or 4,000 pounds per square inch. Oftentimes, actual concrete is much stronger than that, and they use a baseline of a 28-day break because contractors don't want to have issues with low concrete strengths because it leads to problems. But if there's early indications or any indications that the concrete cylinder strengths are coming up low, there's a whole series of investigations. I used to run an office that had concrete materials testing. And whenever we got a low break, I'd get a call from the client saying, well, how did they transport it? How did they cap it? Is your machine calibrated? On and on. How, how are the samples stored? All these things factor into it. And if there continues to be a question about the validity of those uh, laboratory strength tests, they can do things like uh, obtain a concrete core specimen and, uh, and then break that in the lab. So here's a, a video of them taking a concrete core. This is a single wall barrel. And you could do other things. You can obtain thin sections of the concrete for petrographic analysis. You could look for contaminants. You can determine the water cement ratio. You could figure out does the actual concrete mix correspond to what was submitted or what it was supposed to be? And so the other thing is puzzling to me is you can have something that doesn't conform to the specifications, but perhaps it's still adequate. And there's been no indication as to whether the city engaged a consulting engineer to look at the actual in-place strengths or whatever the particular issues are with the materials that were used to construct this bridge. It may not conform to specifications, but in some cases, it could still provide adequate serviceability. And I think it's fair for owners to look at that question because to take a hard line in enforcing the specifications, it may be appropriate, but there's also time factors and, and other issues that come into play. So I think it's, it's better for, for owners to be a little bit more collaborative when, it, when it's warranted. Again, details are pretty light at this point, so I'll continue to follow this story. It reminds me uh, many years ago when I was working for another company uh, the company that I was w with was involved with the geotechnical engineering and on-site materials testing and observation for the construction of a large mechanically stabilized earth retaining wall. And in the midst of construction, after this wall was topped out, there was a large failure over the weekend. And I remember the prime contractor got everybody involved, the material supplier, his subcontractors, the consultants, and said, look, we could take each other to court and spend months and months figuring out who's to blame, or we could all just pony up and, and just replace this wall and move on. And that's what they did. And uh, I thought, wow, that's uh, quite refreshing and quite unusual, and it was very effective. It, it was cheaper and faster for everybody involved to just simply work it out uh, rather than resorting to, to lawsuits. So I don't know that the contractor is going to be in agreement to, yes, we're gonna just replace this bridge at our own cost. There could be uh, things in their favor. The, obviously the city's gonna to have to prove their case. So there's a lot of other developments uh, yet to be revealed on this story. So I wanna send a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support as well as those of you who have provided super thanks. That's another great way to support the channel. I'm gonna roll credits at the end. Uh, appreciate everybody's engagement on this channel and stay tuned for future videos.